Hey everyone, welcome back to a bit more Python programming tutorials. We're looking at a new module today. This is called PyEnchant. So PyEnchant is a spell checking library for Python based on the excellent Enchant library. Um, typically, per my tutorial style, I'm going to be going through the documentation, uh, showing you how it works, kind of guiding you through it, and walking you through it. There is a tutorial and a lot of documentation found online. In fact, I'm online right now at pythonhosted.org forward slash pyenchant. So if you want to follow along, you can definitely do that. But I'll be using the documentation and the tutorial, of course, as a reference, and we'll kind of step-by-step -step walk through that together. So... Let's dive right into it. PyEnchant combines all the functionality of the underlying Enchant library with the flexibility of Python and a nice Pythonic object-oriented interface. It also aims to provide some higher-level functionality than is available in the C API. So to get started, you can check out the comprehensive tutorial, the frequently asked questions, or the auto-generated API listing. Or if you just want to get up and running in a hurry, here's a quick sample of PyEnchant in action. So it's super simple. All you have to do is import the module, um, you can create a dictionary with a specific dictionary tag, and then you can test whether or not these are words that are inside that dictionary. If you see something that's not, you can kind of get suggestions for what it might be, or what the user might have been trying to use. So, let's go ahead and jump over to that tutorial, um, and I'll use this, again, like I said, as kind of a walkthrough to go through um, our actual uh, series here. I hope you're okay with that, um, and just kind of holding your hand and walking you through it with you. I want you to learn that the documentation is really your best bet. So if there isn't any video tutorials on some stuff and you want to learn it, you guys know how to read and understand what you're looking at. So, uh, all right. We can go ahead and just dive right in if we want to install the package of PyEnchant. So I'm on Linux right now. Um, if you're on Windows, you might need to go through a different set of steps. But of course, on Linux, everything is significantly easier. I'll just install PyEnchant through pip. So I'm going to get my command line open up here, and I will do sudo pip. I'm actually going to use pip2 to specify that I want it installed in my Python 2.7 version, and install pyenchant. And there we go. <laughs> it, might, it might need to ask you for your password, but I've already entered mine. And now I've got my Python shell open up, and I can go ahead and import enchant. Sweet. So if I enter enchant dot and then use control space to kind of see everything that we can do here. Here are all of our options. So the thing that we noticed early on in the uh, initial page here was that we can set up a dictionary. And uh, here, I'll, I'll go into the actual discussion here. The most important object of the PyEnchant module is the dictionary object, which represents a dictionary, of course. These objects are used to check the spelling of words and even get suggestions for misspelled words. So here's how you set it up. You're going to create an object, and you're going to set that equal to a dictionary with a dictionary tag. So it'll get more in-depth about what these tags are right here. So actually, let's go through it and read that right now. Dictionaries are created using a language tag, which specifies the language to be checked. In this case, en underscore us signifies American English. That's what I'm going to be using. I speak English, so... Uh, if anyone else uses any other dictionaries, I recommend you check them out. Um, there is a, a function to view what other dictionaries all are available on your system. So, let's play with it a little bit, though. I want that D object, <laughs> D equals enchant.dict, and if you don't pass in a tag, it will try and locate and find the dictionary that's on your system by default. So, it's going to try and determine it all on its own, the language currently in use. This is not always possible, in which case an error is, raged, is raised. Sorry, So you can see this uh, kind of portrayal here. If there isn't a tag specified and you couldn't determine the language, you'll, you'll receive an error. So in my case, I can use it without any arguments. For your system, you may not be able to. You may have to specify en underscore us as a string and a specific tag. And then once you've created that object, you can use d.tag, and that will tell you what it is that you're using. Even if you didn't specify what it is that you're using, it'll set that up for you once it's determined what it is. And of course, I mentioned earlier, there are several top-level functions in the Enchant module that can be used to deal with dictionaries, like to test if you have a dictionary that exists, what ones can we get if we uh, re um, construct and return a new dictionary. It looks like that's doing the exact same thing as our dict constructor. Oh, sorry, dict constructor. I should learn how to talk. And um, list languages is another one that will list the languages for which dicts 
are available. <laughs> I'm going to say dicks this whole tutorial series. Hope you guys are okay with that. Dicks. Yep. I'm never going to be able to get over it. Alright, here we go. Another one, like I was saying, is enchant.list dicks. <laughs> dicks. There's no way to say it safely. It's not possible. And this will return the list of available dicks. God damn it. I'm going to say dictionaries from now on, okay? E-N-Z-A, um, English, that thing, that thing, that thing, and that thing. And, of course, you can do a little bit more Googling if you want to know more of what all this stuff is, variations on English. And I, I don't know. I just use E-N <laughs> underscore U-S because it, it works just fine for me. Okay. So um, we'll get into a little bit more of actually checking these things, if they exist or not. Uh, dictionaries, for one thing, if dictionaries exist... Dict exist? Is that the function name? Yeah, dict exists. Forgot the S. And they're testing if a fake dictionary exists, and obviously it will return a Boolean, yes or no, true or false, and in this case it is false, because that's, of course, a fake dictionary would not exist. Okay, I think that's enough that I want to show you guys about right now. In the next tutorial, we'll actually get into a little bit more of looking at different words and stuff, because uh, I think this is already dragging on long enough. Creating the dictionary object, really simple stuff, of course, and installing it. But I want to try and make shorter videos for you, because I'm really bad at making long stuff all the time. So, we're good. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next tutorial.